have any control since that is so like frequent do they do like periodic exams to to kind of tra try to track that and and don't let it if it, it's starting or I don't know if there is a way to kind of try to stop the process or I suppose very good yes you're going well there um, Mariana you're picking up very quickly you could become a cricket physio very easily um, <laughs> the, there, there is there is and, and it's it's very interesting you say that because the the Australian group um, basically they they've been really uh, instrumental I think in, in, in this area um, and, and then monitoring as you said so um, there is with um, with MRI so the the um, there's a group there and I've looked at the bone what they call the bone marrow edema so when you have an MRI so you can look at if there's a bright spot in the, in the MRI and we're looking into the the pars and the pedicles and all those kind of posterior elements um, and the, they've managed to sort of measure this, what they call the bone marrow edema ratio. So they're looking at if there's a bright spot uh, in those areas of concern, and then they they look at the vertebral body, um, which is at the same level. So that, and then they basically look and see at how much greater is that brightness, if you like, um, compared to the what would you call the control, which is the vertebral body. Um, and that there is certainly some evidence there that the more bone marrow edema uh, you have, the, the the more risk there is that you're going to go on to develop a you know problematic or symptomatic stress fracture. So this is based on doing serial monitoring of asymptomatic bowlers. So they've got no pain, but they will put them through um, through these MRIs um, and and see if they're creating some some bone marrow edema and then perhaps pull them out of matches if you like for a period of time and let it let it see if and then maybe in two or three weeks review again see if the bone marrow edema has settled down again and then they'll they'll carry on again so yeah an answer to your question Mariana yes there is sort of the use of that um, of bone of uh, MRI is um is being used used reasonably well now especially in Australia they're doing it very well obviously um cost is a factor um so i don't know and in, in, in for instance in australia an mri might be two or three hundred dollars um so they can kind of it's something that is manageable um but in new zealand um it's you know mris generally are about a thousand dollars roughly between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars new zealand that is um so trying to get trying to monitor it becomes very expensive so we're not we're not doing that, um, which is just because we, we can't we can't afford to do it really. Um, other places, I'm not sure. Again, America it might be different, and certainly I know in India and Australia, um, the MRIs are certainly a lot lot you know more cost effective, and it's a very good way of helping to manage these or preventing them from from becoming full blown stress fractures. Um, we know that um, uh, you know a stress reaction, if you like, is so. Just a some you know uh, what you call it so a bit of bone reaction without any fracture as such that will heal a lot better and, and you know a lot stronger potentially than than like a partial stress fracture the the danger is that it goes into a full stress fracture and that's a fracture all the way through the pars they they they're difficult to to heal and if you have an unhealed stress fracture on one side you're likely to develop another one on the other side, which means you end up with a um, spondylolisthesis potentially. So that whole segment becomes a little bit unstable. So that's the that's the reason um, for trying to prevent them because once they once they get a hold on, they're pretty hard to to manage from there.